Hey, and welcome back to another Twin Motion video. In this video, we're going to look at the differences in export quality between the Path Tracer and Lumen. Lumen, the new global illumination built into Twin Motion. But before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. Also, consider subscribing. That definitely helps as well. Okay. A few videos I'd recommend you check out before. First of all, the Path Tracer video, and there's plenty of those that we've done previously on all the updates with Path Tracer. There's quite a lot. Um, it's not that in depth, but there are quite a lot of videos covering of various levels of topics looking at the Path Tracer. But definitely look at the, one of my most recent videos, which had to do with Lumen, the new global illumination system within Twinmotion. And the total difference in between them is. You can see clearly if I press this button to turn the path tracer on, it's going to act as if I want to render this specific still, this specific shot. And granted, it's going to look pretty good. The, at the end of the day, it's going to look okay. I don't like some of these materials, but granted, I've got this is on low quality. We're, we're here. And so you can see what happens as soon as I move. It's going to re render. This is nothing new. It's a ray tracing and it's going to calculate all of these pixels to various levels of detail that you determine based on the path tracer settings. And that's that. And so basically you could say it is real time, but it really isn't because you don't want it to be, you don't want to operate like this. There's just no way I, you, you need, this needs to be off. So what are we left with? Otherwise we have ambiance. And then if I expand the properties here, then we can find within the renderer, I have real time, of course, that we want instead of the path tracer, but then I've got global illumination and standard or lumen. So this video is all about lumen, but clearly you can see the difference in the shadows primarily. Um, and this is in real time. So clearly there are plenty of prerequisites, but obviously check out the lumen video that I did. We covered everything lumen that you need as far as hardware and everything, every setting that you need and every setting that lumen is involved with. So what I want to do is I want to save you the trouble of determining which one of these is better. Now I can't, I'm not going to run through every interior exterior, like possible application that this might look, look best, but we're going to export a couple of still images and a couple of videos, not too long videos, but we'll move across the scene. And so we can see some variations uh, across the scene itself, but I want to use specifically just Lumen as like a global illumination system when I export both the video and the images, comparing that to exporting using the path tracer. And I'll be honest and, and up front with you, I honestly would expect the path tracer to look much better. I really do. And, that, and that's just because of what is happening. Uh, Lumen is built to be a real time renderer which is great for literally working in real time. As I move around the scene, I want to see things as accurate as possible, but basically instantly. So, um, in contrast, the path tracer, as we just saw, as soon as I click it is, is not that at all. It's not meant for that instant gratification of I'm, I'm looking and moving around my scene. It's give me a second and I'll, I'll give you a nicer looking image. Now, whether you think that or not based on this is okay, but it's on medium. So you'll see. All right. So what I've done here, and if I go to my media tab as well, I can see I've got this shot and I picked this shot because there's a decent amount of contrast and shadows and, you know, we should get some decent reflection all that. We kind of covers the basis. And what I want to make sure to do is let's set up this scene. First of all, um, I want parallelism and what I'll do is ultimately duplicate this and I'll have one version that is the path tracer and one that is specifically for uh, Lumen. And so where do I do this again in the renderer for the, obviously I'm in medium mode. You can see this is all pink. If I go to render, you can see I'm on real time and, and I'm even on standard. So let's click Lumen here and it immediately changes, you know, like the quality of the lighting, obviously the reflections need some work because this is real time. And uh, part of that, again, it might be some of the materials being meh, you know, like not the greatest materials or the reflections are too high, whatever. Those are things we're not necessarily going to troubleshoot in this video, but for consistency's sake, let's go ahead and save this. Uh, what we can do is this little icon here, this little triangle is indicating that I am in fact using Lumen. You can see whenever I go from standard to Lumen, I'm getting that icon, which apparently is uh, the Lumen icon. I was not sure. And so at this point, you know, I, I'm fairly happy with this, but because I want the highest quality, then I'm going to put my scene detail to four 
Obviously, that's going to export, obviously, the highest detail there. Um, again, of course, the lighting update speed does not matter, so I can leave that at one. That's fine. But, you know, in case it happens to matter, which everything I've read tells me it doesn't, I'll put it at four there. Uh, looking at the lumen reflection settings, obviously, I want the quality maxed out, so it's looking at the reflections. And then bounce count, again, this is totally going to have uh, the most impact when you max that out. Obviously, we've looked at bounce count. Uh, what that does and really the impact there it, as far as the shadows that's all good if i'm talking about maxing everything out okay now i really like where all these settings are again they're all kind of maxed out at this point but regardless of what you're able to do with your system i would always check the visualize mesh conflicts and whenever i check that we can see yeah there's a lot of yellow and the yellow again means that it's not going to be calculated by lumen so whatever it is will not be contributing to the light in the global illumination that lumen can provide this is unfortunate but um, it has to do with a lot of this being water water just will not and then also anything applied with vegetation scatter or painter will not as well i don't know what's up with the roof but it happens and it's far away and i'm not so worried about that another thing is the magenta is um, not calculated at all it, also because of the size uh, and scale of the surfaces i'm Again, I'm not exactly sure what's wrong with some of these. Um, if I cared about being perfect, I would definitely go investigate those on a model triangulation standpoint, maybe scale it up, scale it down, that type of thing. But I'm not so worried. But really, this is just there to check. You know, is this working? Um, is this, are you going to get what you expect? Obviously, as I reduce the scene detail, we get less that is calculated within Lumen. And I want to max that out, of course. So I like the way it is. We don't need to visualize that anymore. Very good. Okay. Uh, one final thing I want to mention, and it's fairly new, and it, yeah, as of 2023.2 as well, I believe it was uh, preview one. Uh, you can find this in the environment, and you know how I feel about auto exposure. Uh, <laughs> I have a love hate relationship. It's totally fine for this application, but you'll notice there's a lot of dark spots here. And one way I can get rid of this is in the effects. I ha have contrast and saturation that I can freely affect. And you can see I can reduce the saturation. Um, it does quite a lot. So reducing the saturation, uh, actually reducing the contrast in this case, will decrease the shadows or as in like lighten up the shadows and then kind of darken the highlights. So it's you're literally you're losing the contrast between the shadows and highlights. Now, I don't want to affect this so much. I think the default is 50 from 50, uh, but I want to go back to the environment. This is a new feature as of 2023.2, and that is the local exposure. This is default not enabled, uh, but when you enable it, it's going to allow you to freely affect the highlight and shadows independently, which is fantastic. And you can look and see, you know, the highlights don't do a whole lot. Like I probably want to reduce it a, a little more um, because I want to see some of these clouds and the detail there. Um, but the shadows up front here that we saw previously, if I uncheck this, this is kind of ridiculous. It's way too dark and it's unnatural. But you can see boosting those shadows is going to allow me to really see some of the detail that's actually there. And that's fantastic. So I, I'm going to keep this on for both Lumen and Path Tracer. Okay, so we are done with everything that I have put together. I really like these settings uh, for our Lumen. So what do we have to do next? Well, we have to duplicate this. So let's go in here and duplicate this. It's going to show up all the way at the bottom. And we can rename this. Obviously, please rename so people know what's going on. We're going to rename this to Path Tracer because that's exactly what it is. Okay. And if I can click on this, we can see, yeah, we're, we have everything. It's all the exact same. But now the only thing I have to do is go to Render, Path Tracer, and ta-da. So... Um, obviously, we are trying to compare highest quality still images to highest quality still images, path tracer versus lumen. So let's at least start with high. So I'll go to high, and it's clearly going to take longer in the preview, and I don't care about the preview, uh, but let's expand these details. So uh, this is kind of up to you. How, how many pixels do you want sampled per pixel? 256, it's fine. It's totally fine. I, you could do 1028, 1040, or 2048, anything, really, up to 10,000, I think it goes. Obviously, it's going to take longer if you do this, um, but there's going to be more samples. It's going to be more detailed. And then likewise, how many bounces? You know, I think this goes up to 100, but 50 is fine as well. So again, this is just going to take longer and longer. I like to keep fireflies at 30. I really don't need to 
change that so much. So really it's these few things here, but you'll also notice, and I want to point this out for sure, that there is no low, medium, or high set. This, These settings, I believe, are taken from your preset settings that are you'd find in the preferences for these different qualities. And so there's really nothing special about them because it's just a different variation of really the samples uh, per pixel and max bounces. Just kind of be aware of that. Um, so I am happy with this. Obviously, you can see it is still trying to render. So this might take 10 plus minutes uh, to get out of the path tracer. But at this point now, uh, we can look to export these. And so how do we do that? Well, obviously, we're going to go to the export. And we can see that I, in fact, want to export a couple of images. We have uh, options for PNG, JPEG, and EXR. Uh, my choice is always uh, of these, if we're just going for basic still image, PNG, because it's going to give you the highest quality image for the lowest file size. And we can go to details here. Uh, if you want motion blur, that really works for videos. Obviously, it does not really work for uh, still images unless we had moving objects, which we do not have. Uh, refinement, I've gone over a video previously about it, how refinement really works and if it's worth doing. I'll be honest, uh, jury's out on that. No way to know um, because it's so hard to tell the difference. Um, I like to keep on high because, again, we're trying to max this out. So this is going to apply to both of my selections here, both the images, both the lumen and the path tracer. Then I need to actually select my images. The nice thing up here is that I've got real time. I've got lumen and path tracer. So obviously right now, every single image I have is going to show up. But if I uncheck real time, I can see that I just have my lumen. We can see it based on the icons there. And then my path tracer. That's great. I can isolate them that way. It's just a real easy way to select. So I've got both of them selected. Now I can click anywhere else and I've got that and I can start the export. So I'm going to start this export and I will see you in just a few minutes. I'll let you know how long it takes, of course, but then we will compare these two still images. See you in a minute. All right. And let's take a look at our results. So I will be honest. I've tried this a lot. This is Lumen <laughs> and I'm not impressed with it at all. Like clearly it's, it's grainy. There's a lot going on and I have a lot of reflections. I mean, a lot of materials with um, reflective values. Uh, unfortunately, I just, I don't think there's a whole lot we can do about it. Just kind of, it is what it is. Um, and this might be just the first sign of <laughs> more to come in this video that the uh, using Lumen for export is just not the way to go. And maybe certain scenes work out. Like obviously you can see <laughs> it did not take into account the, the vegetation because I, that was, I placed that by painting. And if that's the case, it's not going to take into account uh, lumen at all. So that's why it looks better, which is kind of sad to say, but let's jump to the path tracer. Clearly <laughs> a huge difference here. This is the type of thing we're looking for. Now I'm not going to say this is the best image in the whole world because clearly um, a lot could be improved still. But nonetheless, the, just the overall quality and what you would expect out of an export from Twinmotion is very, very solid. It's there. And so I'm pretty pleased with this. And so clear winner, Path Tracer, like obviously when it comes to exporting a still image, take the extra time, export it using Path Tracer, whatever level of settings you could do. And my guess is whenever we get through with the video, I'm going to end up saying the exact same thing. But uh, obviously for the sake of this video, we need to go through and in fact, make a video. Let's go ahead and quit mode here. And so let's, where do we want to make this? Well, first of all, let's go to drone mode, get off of pedestrian, and then we will come into the media and start making a video, all right? Media. And then my video, I don't have one here, but let's create one. And so all of a sudden, yes, we're in media mode. Uh, let's go ahead and start, uh, I don't know, let's say right here and we'll kind of fly in and then back out. And I want, I don't want this being any longer than 10 seconds, something like that. Um, put this at five and we'll make one more refresh this, make one more, go to this one. If we want to fly in here, refresh this and then one more, maybe we're out looking at everything kind of like this. So, a bit dynamic, a bit interesting. We'll see if it even, even looks good. We'll, we'll scrub through this and see what happens with well, the total video at 10 seconds, actually. And we'll see. So we're dipping in out and you know, okay, that's fine. It, it's, it's a video. 
So I've covered editing videos and getting everything worked out between the different frames uh, in previous videos. So check that out for sure. But um, what you can see is if I select a frame, I can I have all the settings here, but you can see it's part one. Well, all of these are parts So part one, two, three. Um, when I come to settings here, I just want to select all of them. And so that means everything is selected as far as me getting uh, all of these levels as far as our ambiance for the path tracer and lumen consistent. And if they're not for any reason, and you just end up editing one part, you can copy the ambiance and then paste it onto another one. So don't feel like you're out of luck in that case, but I'm going to go to settings, select them all here. And like we said before, let's come out here. Uh, I want, uh, I don't care necessarily about auto exposure being on, uh, for the sake of this and the fact that we're moving around, I'll keep it on. Uh, but I do want, um, local exposure on. I want to bring the shadows down a bit and you know, it, you can, I would scrub through it and see as long as you're seeing uh, these types of things that you want to see, you're probably good to go. And you'll know you'll have a single ambiance chosen because that's what we want in this case. If I go to the details here and then single ambiance, I can choose between single and start and end. Basically it goes from one to the other. Um, so choosing settings will allow me to get everything that I want to exactly. Um, go ahead and turn auto exposure on. It makes sense for a video, not necessarily that I want to, uh, but it is what it is. Bring it down just a bit. Looks fine right there. Okay. And then with that, obviously we need to go to our render and real time lumen. Um, this is where the lighting update speed really matters because, uh, obviously I'm moving and if this light is not updating, but you know, this again, not once a second, but, um, one times the speed versus four times the speed, basically you're going to have a higher quality and the reflection and everything is going to look better, more crisp, um, while being obviously softer at the same time, more realistic. If you have that lighting update speed maxed out at four, perfect. Okay. And then obviously if we want full there, um, obviously, yes, <laughs> I want the quality there. And then the same with the bounces. I I'm trying to max all this out. I can I'll probably put my shadows to 400. That's perfectly fine. And so there we go. I have all of my lumen settings as I would hope to see them. This is great. So what I can do is come back to my videos. And again, I want to rename this to Lumen. And of course, once again, we will uh, duplicate this one, call this one Path Tracer. And uh, I know everyone's gonna get mad at me for doing this. And I'm honestly mad at myself for doing this. But because because this is the path race and because we're exporting a video, I am not going to put myself or my computer through the amount of time that it would take on full, like maxed out high settings. Like if you've ever exported a video, knowing that it's many, many, many frames a second, like we're, we're not even done with one frame on high, imagine doing that times 30 per second. And then a 10 second video, 300 frames you do that. You can do the math, but holy moly. So, Honestly, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to keep it on low. Like I'm, I'm sorry, but I do want to, <laughs> I want to just clearly see the difference for one, but two, just kind of know that it it's on low. So you could even go higher. I know, I know I'm kind of going against what I said in the beginning of the video, but that's going to apply more to a, a still image than anything else. Just because my gosh, it, it would be crazy not to uh, have this on a low setting. Okay. So with that done, uh, that's really all that we need to do. Uh, we're good to go with the path tracer versus um, lumen for the videos. And just to confirm again, we can see we have our lumen icon there and we have our path tracer icon there as well. All right. Yeah. And obviously once again, we can scrub through here, make sure we're seeing everything that we want and you don't want to scrub through here with the path tracer on clearly. You can see that. Um, and the final thing I want to look at is the export settings. There shouldn't be a whole lot that we need to worry about. I don't want to export any more images, just these videos. So again, there's a MP4 and PNG. I'm, I'm looking at probably MP4, just as good base uh, format. You're going to have the lowest, again, lowest file size uh, when it comes to the video anyway, with MP4 with the highest quality. Um, here's where the frame rate is. I want to put in 60, uh, but because this is on YouTube and it's probably not going to get a whole lot better, I'm going to leave it on 30. Um, there's other things that we can do here. Uh, I don't have a reason to have this be 3d or 360 or anything like that. Just imagine the amount of time if you had path tracer beyond low, what that would be. So do we want some motion blur? Sure. I'll go ahead and keep it. Uh, my refinement, 
again, because the video is not a still image, I care less about that. Um, it's just going to add extra time and you probably won't even notice the difference. So with all of that, let's go ahead and add our two videos. And again, I will report on how long, long this took. The images for the record took probably 10 minutes for both of them, which was way too many, you know, way too much. Um, but uh, just kind of <laughs> fine tune the details and fine tune all of these settings to where what whatever makes sense to you. So I'm going to export this and I will see you on the other side when you look at both of those videos. All right, first, let's look at Lumen. That probably took, again, another 10, 15-ish minutes. Not too bad, not too bad. So here is Lumen. Okay, you know, pretty, I, yeah, it's fine. You know, I, obviously lots of lighting settings, you know, things need to happen. It's not the nicest looking video, uh, no matter what, mainly from the content, not so much the quality of the export. Um, but let's go ahead and look at the Path Tracer. I have here is the path tracer. Okay. Ugh. I don't know exactly what this is. I can't, <laughs> I can't tell you for sure if that's at the quality, whether that is it's too low or too high, but there's clearly some material issues, I guess you could say more so in here where the, <laughs> Ugh. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. Again, that could be me choosing terrible materials, but that, is pretty clear. Um, I think for simplicity's sake and the fact that it was much quicker and there's less kind of details to work out, I might, if I'm not looking for like literally a perfect video, I'm probably just going to export using Lumen, which is kind of surprising to say. I didn't expect that when it comes to comparing the still images, it's lights out. Clearly path tracer is the winner for still images, but videos, ah, it, the jury's kind of out. It might be, a case by case basis, it could be the frame rate, it could be details, it could be the low setting for path tracer. But my gosh, it would have taken a full day to get 10 seconds off of what you could clearly see as lousy actual content. But for the sake of this video, I wanted to see what it would look like in just direct comparison. So, yeah, I mean, take that for what you will. I definitely let me know what you think when it comes to the path tracer, particularly in videos, because I would like to see if there's a, a an instance where it does beat out Lumen. I like to think there is because clearly we saw that in action uh, on a still images. And if you, in all the videos are clearly just lots of still images. So let me know in the comments below what you think and what kind of results you're getting with the, with Lumen versus path race really here. So again, that will do it for this video. We looked at uh, exporting a video, exporting a still image, Lumen versus path racer. It's going to be up to you. You know, I like Path Tracer a lot for images and Lumen a lot for videos. So that's how I'm going to probably use it moving forward. So that will do it. And thank you. If you did happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. Really helps me out quite a lot. Also, consider subscribing. That does as well. I hope to see you in the next video. We got new videos coming out every single week now. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much for watching.